Hi, my name's Bob Eaglestone. I'm Professor of Contemporary Literature and Thought here at Holloway University of London. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about a, a book that I was asked to write called Literature, Why It Matters. Now, I'm not going to tell you in great detail about the book, but I'm going to tell you four things that really inspired me to help me write it. And the first was thinking about what is literature? And, and the truth is that after two and a half thousand years of trying to work out what literature is, no one has any idea. Every example you think of has counterexamples and exceptions. So instead of trying to be like a scientist and define what literature is, I try to think about what was literature like to use a metaphor or way of understanding it. And it, it seems to me that literature is like a, a living conversation. So, um, and what does that mean? What are the effects of that metaphor? Well, one, of course, literature is a, a communication. And we think of communication as uh, conveying information from A to B. But in fact, even in the most simpler, simplest form of communication, we convey a whole world of things. So literature conveys information, but also a world. The second thing about conversation, just as you and your friends talk about whatever you want, so literature is about whatever you want. It's about, it can be about anything. Third, when we have conversations, we talk about things that matter to us. And one of the weird things about literature is it makes things matter. OK, who knew we'd care about Dobby the house elf? Or, uh, as Hamlet says to the actor, what's Hecuber to him that he should cry for her? OK, literature does the same thing. It, it pulls events, it makes events matter. Also, of course, the conversations we have, they're little improvised plays when you have them with your friends. So literature is creative, not just in the writing, but in the understanding and responding. These are creative engagements with literature, with literature both on, the, on both sides, the readers and the writers. Of course, conversations also exist in time. A conversation you had two weeks ago will, will be, the meanings will be different, it'll have changed. And that's true of literary texts too. They exist in time, and part of our understanding doing English is to see how they change, what that change means. And finally, of course, um, a real conversation is free. I know in life we're often given orders or told to give the right answer, all these kind of things, but a real conversation, and we've all had them, is free. And literature should be free too. So literature is about trying to think about the freedoms that get away from the ways in which they constrain us. So these are all reasons why literature is like a conversation. And that idea... That was my first idea, to think of literature being like a conversation. But that led to my second idea as to what should studying literature be like. Well, there's lots of interesting people, ways of doing uh, education, discussions about it. But roughly speaking, we might say there are two sorts. In some models of education, ideas are kind of stuffed into your head, are poured into your head, are deposited in your brain. But that's not what literature is like. Ideally, literary education should be like literary studies, a dialogue, a conversation. One of the great things about our discipline is that if I were a professor of geology, I would just know much more about rocks than you would, and I'd come and tell you about rocks. But when we do literature in a seminar, we discuss things, you've had ideas, you've read this novel, you've had thoughts, I've read this novel, I've had thoughts, and we discuss how we respond to those ideas in a real dialogue. And so I tried to write about that experience of a dialogic understanding of studying literature. The third thing I thought was about what can literature do? Uh, and because literature can be about anything, it's like a conversation, in a way, that's a, a silly question, because of course literature could do all sorts of things. But I was particularly struck by a psychological medical study uh, about small groups of people who had uh, an array of uh, mental challenges or who'd been addicted to drugs, who'd been done work reading poems together. One of them said, one of them, Arthur, he said, in reading literature, you do the feelings. Imagine, express, read aloud, perform, and feel them as acts. Another said that the poetry showed that there was more that simply appeared on the surface. And the psychologist studying it said, in the end, that 
What literature can do above all is trigger access to felt experience of the human core and offer a freer, deeper and more mobile way of thinking about it. So literature is about us helping us think through what it is to be a human being. And that led me, in my third idea, to think about the baddies. There are lots of people who aren't interested in literature, don't want to talk about literature. They want to reduce us in a way to, to machines, to machine thinking. And one thing literature constantly does is give us those little interruptions, those moments where what it is to be us can come out. And that's a crucial thing in literature. I talk more about that in the book. And finally, of course, um, there's a question. It's quite fair to ask if you're in year 12 or 13 and thinking about your degree. The question of what literature can do for you. Is there anything that, uh, you know, can literature help you? And we're often told, aren't we, that uh, in order to succeed in the world and have careers, we need to study sciences or, or coding. But my book discovered, I discovered doing it, that's completely wrong. You don't have to believe me, you can just Google it. So Google, the biggest technology company in the world, did a huge project called Project Oxygen to see which skills led to people being most successful in Google. And they thought, of course, it would be coding and all these kinds of things. But in fact, here are the seven skills they found that really help people in their lives and careers. Being a good coach, communicating and listening well, possessing insights into others, including other different points of view and different values, having empathy towards and being supportive for one colleagues and being a good critical thinker and problem solver, being able to make connections between complex ideas. And all these are what English teaches. It may be true that coding will get you your first job, but it won't make your career. But what you learn in English, understanding complex ideas, seeing different points of view, making connections, listening and responding and communicating, these are the things that employers really, really want. So it's great, of course, to to have the STEM skills and so on, but underneath these profoundly human things are what uh, employers are going to need. And that led me, in, in a way, to my final thing, to think about uh, how English is constantly changing. So if studying literature is like a conversation and teaching is a dialogue, it's constantly evolving and changing. So one thing I thought about is how is the subject that you do at school called English, how is it changing? In one, one way is that there's a huge growth in the study of what it is to do creative writing, how to write, how to respond creatively, not just writing essays, but writing short stories and poems, thinking about how writers use words and using those things yourself to create. But it's also true that the study of literature is expanding to all sorts of other fields and ideas. I was going to highlight one that was particularly interesting. Computer games. Computer games like Red Dead Redemption or, or Skyrim or even Grand Theft Auto. These aren't just kind of simple shoot 'em ups These are complex narratives with character interaction, with relationships to the world. And these, these are like... Uh, these are, have the complexity and detail of novels or of great films. And these are the sort of things that, if you do English, you are able to, to study and understand. So these were the ideas that inspired me to write my book. And my book covers these sorts of things in more detail than I can do here. But it's the inspiration of literature as communicative and literature as dialogue that really set me off. And that's what I tried to get in, in my book. Thank you.